All right, it's six o'clock. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Let's pause for a moment of silent reflection. To pledge allegiance, Mr. Post, do you want to leave us in that? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. <laughs> Drop a roll that I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Willie, you want to lead us in a roll call and establish our quorum? Sure. Jennifer Roberts. Here. Chet Bam. Here. Shane Davis. Here. Steve Dennis. Here. Marissa Skaggs. Here. All right. We're all here. Uh, first order of business approving the minutes from the February meeting. Those are in your drive as well as hard copies located at the back of the room. I'm sure we've all had time to review those. Make a motion to approve the minutes from the prior meeting. Have a motion. Do we have a second to approve the minute, the minutes from the prior meeting? I'll second. Do we have a motion and a second? All in favor of approving the February 2023 minutes signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carried. Um, before we're gonna kind of switch the order of the agenda for a second because I know we have somebody who needs to make public comment um, before waiting until the end. And also as like a little bit of a housekeeping measure. Currently, the sign-in sheet has a blank for your ad or for speakers' addresses. Um, because it is documented on that sheet, we are going to waive the requirement of stating your address at the podium. Um, these meetings get put on YouTube, and I understand the sensitivity to not wanting your address being broadcast for everybody, you know, who may go back and watch this. So, uh, with that, that's just a little housekeeping thing. Um, those public comment guidelines are listed on the website in the town council section, and those changes will be reflected after this meeting. So um, with that, we'll open it up for public comment. Bob, go for it. Uh, the only update I have is that it's a larger project than I anticipated, a much larger project than I anticipated. I, I said this last two months that it would be done, it's not. Um, but the uh, suit will be filed any day now. I just received the final bit of information from the town this week, and it is by a factor of 20 more voluminous than I anticipated. Not fatal to the, the cause or anything like that. The town remains committed to filing. But uh, that is my uh, long winded way of saying it's not that big. Yeah. Sounds like you're getting closer. <laughs> I, we are. I promise that. But uh, I, I'm embarrassed that it's not done. I apologize to you. And, well, perhaps that signifies the tremendous amount of work that's still to be done. Because I know the last time that uh, Joanne and Doug and uh, Fletcher and I met with the town, uh, we only had a list of 42 items. And most of those items were, I thought, were pretty serious. That's the reason I've added up with my guesstimate around $300,000. That didn't include the other buildings. So part of the reason that uh, I read all the documents that were required by Renton to sign, and I don't think they did, was because Doug had asked me to. And he asked me to represent him as far as the work that was going to be done on the buildings that he owned, the two buildings across the street here. Um, after one of the meetings with the town where we showed him a list, it was back in 1918. Uh, he walked across the street and there was a carpenter there that was excellent. And he was proud of his tools, proud of his equipment, and he was installing clear white pine. And so after, I won't, I won't take him out of the bag, <laughs> but after 19 years, this is clear white pine that was protected by an overhang on the railroad depot, the Anderson Young Ballet Theater. There's no overhangs protecting the clear white pine that was installed over here. And clear white pine is not a designated uh, product to be used by the architects. They had products that they recommended, some of the cement board, another product, boral, 
it's hard to find any wood that's good and can last for any significant amount of time now. Unless you get woods from foreign countries, and I try to stick to the United States. So this is just my example, one of the reasons that I think this is very serious. And there's windows over there that are leaking. Uh, we've done what we can to stop the leaking, but one of the windows is a plain glass window, and I believe it's a thermal paint unit, and it's barely in the opening. And this is a large window. Heavy winds, water still gets through there. I don't care if you talk it forever, it'll vibrate, and that's uh, where the gelato shop sign is over here. That north large plate glass window is just barely hanging in. Um, it's got it authorized us to go ahead and do a number of things uh, a few years ago just to stop gap measures. There's nothing that we did that was a permanent measure. So that would have taken a lot more time and a lot more money. That's my presentation. Thank you for moving me up. Yeah. That's a business owner we didn't tell. Thanks. Any other public comment that needs to go at the beginning? With that, Clerk Treasurer's Report, Willie, you're up. All right, I think all of you have had a chance to look at the register and see it. we spent a little bit over $2 million on our bills this month. And I'd like to invite anyone that hasn't come up to the clerk's office and look over this and see if they've got any suggestions. This is where we can save money or maybe they know somebody can give us a better discount or something. We'll take it. Uh, General fund, we haven't balanced everything yet. General funds sitting about 994,000, so we're in good shape there. That's about all I have. Okay, can we get a motion to approve the claims for the month of February as presented by our Treasurer Willie Bowles? So we have a motion. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the motion for the claims for the month of February. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We can go into department reports now. First one up is police. Mark, can you come up? up? Yeah. Get him. Thank <laughs> I apologize. I walked in and I realized I kind of dressed like a fireman. So. <laughs> Skirt. What's nice? He picked, he picked on me right out of the shingle. Oh, so. I had to. He picked on me. All right. So we've held our annual training meeting for the year so we can uh, make sure we get all our hours for 2023. We made sure we did get our 2022. So we're all still pleased. Um, and meet all the legal requirements. So that was a good meeting. And uh, we just had taser training yesterday and everybody uh, did it and didn't get hurt. So it was a good day. Um, the training standards for the state of Indiana have kind of changed. They used to be you were allowed to do static training, which was just simply shooting a target with a taser, uh, which was, was a good thing. My department was very bored of that and thought it was ridiculous. So now they've made a new law that it has to be more dynamic. So my guys are excited. And that's why South Madison gave us some money for a taser suit. So we can actually have a bad guy fighting, running, all that. And we have to decide to tase or pepper or shoot or tackle or whatever we choose to do. And it's, it's more hands-on and, and real. So training was great. That was put on by Officer Crow yesterday. Um, we just uh, received six uh, new patrol rifles. We purchased them from a company out of Seymour, Indiana called Boss Tech. A super great group to work with. They, um, when we were calling about rifle prices, they actually drove up to meet with us to bring us their, their uh, rifles. And uh, we hit it off immediately and realized, yeah, I want to keep my money in Indiana. So we were able to purchase six rifles at this time. Um, we're closing in on the final uh, graphic design for the new squad cars. We currently have one that we have to sticker. So uh, Alford's out in it right now, and it's totally legal without the stickers, but we're gonna put some on. Uh, we've just been trying to tweak the design and make sure we get something we want. Um, and then Frederick's Construction has finalized the work in the building where they put in new doors, and uh, we've installed a, a shower back in the back in our evidence uh, scene area. 
Uh, if you haven't seen it, we just we just built a new area. When I say built, we fabricated an area in the building to serve as our evidence room. So we're no longer having evidence in a room where people are sitting and eating and talking. Uh, so we, nobody knows what's on marijuana these days or anything. So we've now contained it in an area and there's a shower available right there if we need to decontaminate or something like that. Um, total reported uh, dispatch calls to the county was 1,309 for the month. And that is it. Yes, sir. Talk to them, if you will, about the clock cameras. Ah, and the uh, clock cameras were installed. I, because I do everything a month behind, uh, they just completed that yesterday. So all four of our flock cameras are up and running. Uh, and we just had a pursuit yesterday. Uh, I, I say a pursuit, we got to watch a guy drive fast away from us uh, because of our car's engines. So uh, we'll get a new fleet here soon. So hope he returns. With that being said, it was a flock. Uh, it was a stolen car, came from about 67. And uh, it actually had been uh, involved in a car jacking down in Indianapolis. And it ran right into Anderson. So there's a lot of a lot of stuff flows through your town on a daily basis. And these flock cameras are really going to open up the window for that. Three, three or four. Four of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, LaBelle or LaBelle's have theirs. Ingalls, Anderson's getting, I don't know if they're 100% up now. Mm -hmm. they're all up. Yeah, they're all up. And we all piggyback off each other. So if, if, I, if I get a trigger on one of my flocks because a vehicle is traveling, It'll then trigger other ones and we can try to pattern where it's going. Yeah, we're excited. Just to comment on that, Nanderson, we've uh, we've solved three cases in the last month with, with the flock cameras. I mean, they're fabulous. Yeah. Good. yeah. One thing we'd like to see in the future is maybe like new housing additions uh, fund the first camera to be installed at the entries to their to their additions. That way if there was a break in in the in the addition or or any kind of crime. Uh, the flock would help us solve those and that's another funding avenue for a new addition uh, or even like the parks department we talked to Aaron a little bit about that maybe uh, digging into their pocket a little and getting them in the park is there funding available for the portable ones where we can move them around maybe get two or three to move them they're not stationary like we yeah. can move them i don't know i can look into it it's also be good at like any site development like the they will be good and the anywhere Anywhere. Okay. They will they will be good absolutely anywhere. Because I I mean I think if we've got these subdivisions coming in that could just be over there as right. part of their design standards. Mm -hmm. But we could also get it for non-residential yes. as well. Oh it'd be great, like back on the back with the Dr. Sly or yeah. any of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for bringing that up. I yeah. I would have brought it up next month, but not 30 days. Sorry. <laughs> and they uh give you a print out on the traffic count. Oh yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we can log in and look at it every day. The one that was first mounted out by uh, the 219, the number, it was like within three hours, it was pushing 1,500 reads. Just, yeah, it's being Yep, it is. All right, that it? thanks. Okay, uh, is George on Zoom? <coughs> No, okay. I think you're yeah. All right. Aaron, you're up. Good evening. I don't have anything pressing to add other than what's in my report. So if you all have any questions about what's in the report or any general questions, I would be happy to answer those as best I can. I did hear on the park though with the uh, baseball signups, they've had it extremely large number of uh yes kids. yeah so they're over 700 yeah uh sign up so far which is numbers they haven't seen for 20 years yeah it's been, um, so yeah it's great it's gonna be busy any other questions for aaron are they still looking for uh youth um hires like yes like teenagers and things yes. like that yep who do who, who, uh Todd Miller will be the best one to contact. Uh, and he's in our office. So if you call the park office at 778-2222, we can get you in touch with him. Yeah, because I heard, uh, spoke to Adam last night. 
Truman, who's the baseball, I guess, baseball director, director or whatever. Yeah. And he was going to have like some classes and a meet and greet for the high school students and stuff. Mm -hmm. So trying to recruit some people. Yep. Yep. Any problems getting people to the golf course with the road? Yeah. <laughs> We've given a lot of directions. Uh, no, yeah. 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 <laughs> Thankfully, we haven't had too much nice weather, but. Um, the three I mean, Japanese ladies and Chinese ladies make it. Yes, they did. Okay, very yeah. good. That was a tough one. Anything else for Aaron? All right, thanks, Aaron. Thank you. All right, planning department. We have our <coughs> building permit summary in front of you. I don't have too much. Um, the building condemnation order has been lifted for 116, 118 West State Street. Uh, that was lifted at the February BCA meeting. So both of those businesses um, have COOs. I know the bake shop has to go through the health department uh, to reopen. So that's kind of on them, but uh, they're ready to go. Um, our business park trail that we started uh, late last year, we've gotten a fully executed contract from Inot. So I am waiting on one sheet of paper to get authorized and then we can really notice to proceed to Bannock, who is our, um, we got the, uh, they got the bid. So, um, other than that, community crossings is moving along well, as well as the IFA transportation and stormwater grant. Any questions on anything I've got? Okay. I will look into those block cameras for our UDO uh, yep. requirements and all sorts Good. of development. I think that's a really excellent idea. Mm -hmm. All right, Scott. So, so the pad for the ossuary in the cemetery is complete, and we're going to take delivery of that on Wednesday next week, the 15th. So we're looking forward to that. Um, as we alluded, the Fountain Avenue is shut down right now for the installation of the culvert. They build down the roads. It's, it's, uh, it used to be years and years ago a state road, so it's fairly thick. As they have started to dig into it, they've discovered a lot of spaghetti as far as drainage. So it's a good thing we're doing it. Um, next photo. Based on input of a lot of the um, shop owners around town, um, we've made it clear, clearer where the public parking is. So you'll see, uh, Rick, see where Ricky and his crew have installed these um, public parking signs. And we're going to continue to um, add some more marking, especially here by the laundromat, to make it clear which spots are public and which ones are private. Um, Pendleton is hosting next week the annual Madison County Stormwater uh, uh, Contractor Training, which is part of uh, we're required to do to uh, as part of the consortium for the county is to give training to contractors so that they don't our waters and that's part of maintaining our uh, stormwater discharge uh, permit and then um, the first public meeting on how we're addressing growth in Pendleton will be uh, March 27th at 6 p.m. we're not so sure where yet if we're looking at the pit uh, community building maybe here as soon as we get that locked on we'll, we'll let you know. so that questions Okay, thanks. All right, moving on to old business, 2304, community development coordinator position and wage. The job descriptions are available on our drive and also at the back of the room. Do you have any comments on how this developed with PBA and Main Street? Scott? Do you have any comments on how this oh, came like together? I said earlier, it's, job description, a, everything. it's a, going to be a very busy job. Whoever we select to do it will also have not only the town, but under contract with uh, Pendleton, uh, Chamber of Commerce, formerly PBA, and Main Street Pendleton to go after grants, um, handle events and programs. So really looking forward to it. We've had a lot of 
excitement in the community that we're getting somebody to do this. More than you would think. So. <laughs> when we pulled that job description together, you know, we utilized PBA's points of what they wanted, Main Street, what they wanted, and we kind of came together to form this master job description. So yeah, it was all bodies were. Everybody had the input. Yes. yes, it yes. Was, we did it together. Um, first of all, thank you for the job description. I've read it several times and it looks really good. Um, I just have a couple questions. I, I'm 100% for this, but um, the last meeting we talked about how the PBA and the um, uh, Main Street was going to put in a certain amount for the salary. Where is that anywhere? It's 10,000 each. I mean, shouldn't we have it somewhere in writing? Well, we're, the next steps are to draw up a contract between each entity to outline the scope of work that that person will do as part of that contract between us and the DBA. Well, I was just thinking 10 to 15 years down the road when none of us really are probably going to be here, <clears throat> the understanding of who's yeah. responsible for what. So at some point, looking at what other towns that are experiencing fast growth went through, they this, this is a model where lessons learned from other towns. And eventually what happens is that the, it becomes three positions. It spins off into a full-time job with their chamber, a full-time job with their main street. By then, as you can imagine, the population is starting to get to be the magnitude. What Fishers was 20 years ago when nobody was To kind of piggyback on that, I wonder, would it be worthwhile when you're writing the contract between the three, something about revisiting this within a certain amount of years yes. to reevaluate right. where we are and right. whether it's worth splitting it? Or, I mean, is that how they exit, I guess? Yeah, so that's that's a good point. Uh, we've just dis discussed that. And basically, it's within, probably come up with within a few weeks, or not weeks, but a few months maybe of this year. You know, if, if, let's just say it's worst case scenario, it's not working. Uh, both the entities want to pull out of the contract. There's nothing saying that we couldn't pull that position back to a part time position in any way. But we'll see. You know, I, I, I'm confident that whatever the future brings us with that will be able to adjust to it. I, I'd have to agree with what Steve was bringing up about $10,000 from. Main Street, ten thousand dollars from PBA. That maybe that needs to be in this salary holdings someplace. I mean, we're talking sixty well, thousand dollars. It alludes in the into the job description. And we'll make it doesn't clear say here. unless I misread it. It doesn't say they're given ten thousand and they're given ten thousand. Well, this is this is the year. job description. Put that in advertisement for a job. Yeah, but we'll get, I think we're getting ready to approve $66,000. Yes. In the, the way salary. Yes. Right. So we're just going to pay $46,000. Because exactly what Steve said. If I'm wrong, tell me. But I, I think we can. Well, if you want to spell that, I mean, if you, this is the job description. We get to work out. First step was, like I said last month, we will work on the, the job description. They have each had a more detailed job description. We tried to make this a little bit more generic. It's more specific. Those the specific items, those things that need to be more specific, that will be in the scope of work for that contract. With so, PBA and Main Street. Yeah, and it'll be a contract with each other. So. Like on our salary ordinance, we don't necessarily spell out like who's paid out of utility, who's paid right. out of general fund, right. whatever. Right. Um, and so this is just allowing for that wage to be drawn. Before the person is hired, there will be an agreement signed between us, PBA, and Main Street. And if somehow they get cold feet between now and then, yeah. then I think the entire process starts back over. Right. I mean, is that fair to say? Yeah. Okay. 
in Pendleton's part of it, uh, what fund is it being drawn out of? So it'll be a planning position. The planning is uh, funded potentially through the utilities, although they do have a pretty good revenue stream from permit, construction permits, building permits, building permits thank you. Uh, certificates of occupancy. That sort of thing. And then my last question is under the qualifications, it says become certified as a grant administrator within the first 12 months. Mm -hmm. What I've heard and spoken to people about is that grant writing is a big part of it. Yes. Are we going to be looking for somebody that's already has that? Um, we would like somebody to go through that certification process, mostly if they're not familiar with federal grants. I've been through that training myself. It's a great way to get grounded on how federal grants work. But they can also be, <clears throat> there is other certifications, professional certifications in grant writing. Thank you. But it, as you know, as you can see, the job description is has a heavy emphasis on communications and grant writing. So Hannah will kind of be monitoring where this person's time is spent, because I mean, some of this stuff is pretty vague. And like could suck a lot of time if right. really like was she getting paid more for for whoever yeah. grant writing but right. she's planning an event that's taking you know, all of her hours yeah that's we've had a lot of discussion about there so there could be one one week where it's just you know 100 <clears throat> or it, it, it's it'll just be, something that has to be yeah, monitored right yeah. yeah so that person will report to the planning director which is a they're going to have to be very well somebody who's self motivated, self managed because they're going to be going to a lot of night meetings, events, that sort of thing. They're going to have to have a lot of it's, a, it's, it's not going to be an easy job, but there's some people that would love to have that job. It's just their nature. And I think moving forward with that position, too, something I can do is kind of set up a system for them so they can keep track of that if they, you know, yeah. don't want to do that. That would be important. Yeah, so it'll be easy I to lose track if you just get sucked into a project. I right, think. yeah, absolutely. So just putting those systems in place before they get yeah. here or when they get here is going to be important. Yeah. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Oh, just, just piggyback on Chet's comment. The first one here is is that is an ordinance to approve two thousand five hundred eighty four dollars and five cents per pay, twenty six pays at sixty seven thousand one hundred eighty five dollars. With that being said, again, there's nothing said about the twenty grand coming from the two other entities. So, I'm guessing we're just expecting that if they go, hey, we can't, then you guys are approving a sixty seven thousand dollar salary for the position. And I know I know I'm, I'm a I like to do things with a handshake with MOUs and what's your point? I don't understand. What's your point? I well, can, I can. I don't so understand. so the town is all in at sixty-seven thousand one hundred eighty-five dollars and thirty cents for yeah. salary. Yeah. Okay. With no agreement with anybody. We're else. not I'm going. But I think that we have the understanding here within this room that we're not going to hire anybody without. The agreement being signed between PBA slash Pendleton Chamber and Main Street and the town setting up the structure. What I'm saying, what I my my analogy was in our salary ordinance, even though we have people who are paid through the utility that it may not be readily apparent that they're utility people, we don't spell out where their salary comes from. And so we will have an agreement between the other two entities and ourselves before this person is ever hired. So, so the sixty-seven thousand. I'm just gonna grab the sixty-seven thousand. We can subtract twenty from that, and that's what the town is in. Yes. 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 Until then, they go belly up, and then according to this, you're gonna be in for the full. No. You didn't hear what I said. Okay. If we get into a scenario where it's no longer a full-time position, so we, we can cut it back. To, yeah, we can put, cut it back. To, or a third, or and what if yeah. those two say, "Hey, we can't pay"? Well, then we're in that same situation. So you just, or you just 
Only up to 67 miles. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this is an at will stay. It's not like we're entering into a five year union contract with no. Well, the agreement you were discussing is in our, you know, town. We're yeah. dealing with town penalty and town employees. But when you're seeking money from outside entities, it just concerns me if they come and say, we don't have to tender. I understand I understand your point that you don't want us to be on the hook for something we don't need to be on the hook for. Right. But what I'm assuring you is that there is an agreement that is, that will be signed before we hire a person spelling out the roles and responsibilities of the three organizations that are on the hook for this position being PBA slash Middleton Chamber, Main Street, and the town. Right. So there'll be an MOU at that point. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. MOU a contract, a contract, Sorry, some right, contract. Uh, an no, MOU, no, whatever we want to call it. And we'll use usually between two public entities. Sure. This would be between a public and private. Mm -hmm. Along Mark's line here, are we going to put anything or say anything to the applicants that this might be a possibility down the road? It might go from full time to a part time job. Yeah, that, I think that that's going to be an important thing that we stress and actually screen for is the fact that. We want to keep the chain of command, a unified chain of command, where it's very clear who their boss is, but we'll be doing work under contract for these two entities. And so, and how that position, it's really an incubator type position. And as that position matures, we can talk through, we'll, we will talk, walk, talk through and walk them through with that, what the possibility would be, because I would think any candidate that's worth anything is going to be smart enough to say, but how do you think this will mature? How, yeah, how but do you I think, think they start to spin off? And I think that everybody's going to understand. Part of that will be also what if it does go south? Right. I mean, I so, think that everybody understands this is a newly created position right. that has some quirks, but not the other positions within the town doesn't have, like, yeah. you know, this is a different situation. So I think the applicants understand that going into it. Um, and I think there's also going to be a discussion about the exit strategy, you know, at the, if this thing grows and the other two organizations are successful, you know, how do they get to determine where they go? If they say, well, I really want to stay at PBA or I really want to go at Main Street, right. Right. how that looks, I think that the applicant is going to be understanding that all of this is kind of very fluid right now. Be driven, I think, more by population growth than by time. Yeah, I think we'll end up using 100 of his time and have to tell the others, you know, something else. You know, that yeah, I think I think we'll find that we we'll want that to be the full time penalty person before they do. Right, we might, but we never see. Yeah, we'll see. And one other thing, I'd like to see a little more language in here with this uh, 40 hours. This just flex. Like we need to spell out something because you and I probably will be here 10 years. So, so variable hours. I yeah, I understand I mean, your variable. opinion. I understand my opinion. Yeah, we didn't want to put you know nine to five because that won't work with this job. Right. We don't have a st substantial number of and weekends. It's and weekend commitments. So mm -hmm. uh, variable. Karen, we had a comment on Zoom. Will the contract include an annual escalator clause so this person's salary can be increased each year? So it'll be the salary is determined by the salary ordinance. Right. <coughs> it is a peer to the uh, planning administrator. Planning administrator. So um, most likely that position will keep in sync with that other peer position. Anything else on Zoom? All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns about 2304? Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a motion? Do you have a second? I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. All in favor of adopting 2304 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carried. Okay, uh, new business. I'm going to make a motion to amend new business to add 
2307 unused vacation time ordinance that I printed that everybody has. I also emailed it earlier in the week for last week, I guess. Uh, we can add that to the bottom of this though. So um, let's go ahead and start with 2305. Oh wait, I guess I need a second to amend the agenda to add 2307. Make a motion to amend the agenda. Second. Okay. Awesome. All in favor of amending the agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 2305, amending the UDO. Hannah, do you want to talk about those yeah. amendments? Yeah. Um, these are some amendments. Um, I've been doing a deep dive into our UDO page by page uh, the last month. 160 pages, so I'm about halfway through it. Um, but these were just some amendments uh, on clarifying some uses uh, that weren't very clear, some language scriveners errors and monotony standards and then some definitions that were not present. So um, I know it seems like we amended this document a lot, but as we use it, um, when it began in October of 21, it just becomes more and more clear things that either need to be changed, removed, amended, things like that. So it is a living document, um, but at its core, it is a very solid document. We should be able to get through developments um, that have been happening really well with it. So I commend you guys and Planning Commission and Rachel and Taylor for their hard work putting that together before I ever got there. So. And all 28 of these received a favorable recommendation from Planning Commission. Yes, a few of them were um, you can see in the very last yes. column, a few words switched around within the amendment um, where it was a question and they answered my question in there. Yep. Yeah, it's a it's a lot to go through these amendments every month with planning commission, but I commend the group for sticking with it, making it as tight as we can. So yeah. yeah. We have a motion to approve the amendments to the UDO. We have a motion, do you have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving the amendments to the UDO and the ordinance 2305 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carried. Do we need the planning commission counts as the first? So second. Perfect. Okay. Um, ordinance 2306, amended economic development rider. Scott, do you want to talk about this? So we have that already. Um, IMPA has asked us to update what their criteria is and basically um, instead of half a thousand kilowatts, which is a megawatt, uh, you know, what did I say half? Half a megawatt, half a megawatt. It's now full thousand kilowatts, which is one megawatt. <laughs> instead of it being 500 kilowatts, it is now one megawatt yes. is the requirement to qualify for these incentives by IMPA. This is not an incentive that the town is offering for people who develop large uh, demand clients. This is from IMPA, correct? Correct. Okay. And it makes no difference. It, it right. doesn't affect our revenue. Right, just because we have an economic development writer, we had to make our language match IMPA's language. Okay. Any questions for Scott about the IMPA? economic development writer. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve 23-06. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve 2306 amended economic development writer. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Do we have to suspend the rules or are we okay we're if we slow okay play this? Time. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we're ahead of that. We will just let that ride to April for second. All right, resolution 2302, South Madison Fire Protection Territory borrowing from water utility for hydrant fees. Steve, do you want to talk about this? Chris, do you guys want to, do you want to start? How can we make it? Well, first, first of all, I'd like to make a couple of statements here before we get into that, if I could. Um, three little notifications here uh, real quick that I want to put a shout out to the South Madison Community Foundation. Uh, they awarded us $10,000 grant to re replace some fire hose that was aging 
So all of our apparatus have a bunch of fire hose on it that's brand new and stuff. So it'll last us for a while. Also, the Kiwan is a uh, donated a rescue dummy. Um, it's actually it's a pretty cool device. It's more movable like than the 30 year old dummy that we actually have now. It actually has a voice box in it that where we can actually have a conversation with the firefighter for search and rescue and stuff. So it's more realistic instead of actually trying to maneuver the dummy that's 30 years old that we currently have. And also to Ascension Hospitals, uh, they donated about 10 boxes of uh, smoke detectors uh, for us to pass out uh, that anybody that needs it, all they have to do is just contact one of the fire stations. Anybody can give one per household. We just need a, an address of where it's going for the hospital's records uh, to show that uh, these smoke detectors are being passed out to the public and stuff. So like I said, anybody can actually go to the fire stations and, and get a free smoke detector for the residents. So, so other than that, that's what I got. So what I'll do is I'm going to kick this over to Steve real quick because this is the first time that I've actually laid my eyes on this. Um, so with that being said, I'll turn it over to Steve. Okay. Um, I didn't know I was going to speak tonight, but I will. Um, basically, this money that is from the um, fire hydrants is the $450 times 307 hydrants. Is that correct? Yep. Okay. That comes to $138,150. Um, I'm assuming this is a temporary solution until we as a board can come up with a better accounting of how um, to help the fire territory succeed. Uh, with We talked about growth uh, in the town of Pendleton, and it went from 230 hydrants to 307 almost overnight. The, the fire territory cannot continue to pay $450 per hydrant as these new additions come in. Uh, something has to be done. I mean, $140,000, that's with benefits another firefighter. If you look at it in four years, five years, it's a truck. I mean, um, I'm conflicted on both ends because I'm on the town board and I'm also directly liaison with the with the fire territory, but we have to come up with a better plan, uh, and there are plans out there. And and myself and, and uh, Marissa and, and fire territory attorney and Jeff Graham, we've sat a couple of weeks ago and talked about the certain different plans that are options that are available. Uh, um, I just feel that charging the territory $140,000 a year to maintain fire hydrants uh, is exorbitant. And uh, we need to come up with a better plan. Um, we were, and Marissa and I have talked about this, we were thrust into this position. And we're just, uh, I, and I think she would agree, we're trying to come up with a better idea of how we could do things. Uh, if this would continue and, and and every fire hydrant that would come into the town and, and the fire territory would be responsible. I mean, we could be in the two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars range in the next five years. And, and to me, that's ridiculous. I'm just gonna say it, it is. And if you look around other areas regarding fire territories and what they charge um, uh, to maintain them, I mean, Pendleton's at at the highest level. I mean, most towns like Anderson and some other they they put that that cost off to the consumer. And there are statutes saying you can do that. But the main thing that I think needs to happen is the water study, um, which I've been told that is coming, you know, you know we're, we're looking into that. But, um, and I'm just gonna put this out there. Um, you know, we, we're, we're supposed to be responsible for Ingalls, uh, their fire hydrants, which is like $21,000. Nothing in the MOU we signed with April says that we would be responsible for those hydrants. And now Ingalls is talking about having a conversation to do away with the fees. So as a board, uh, I appreciate this band-aid 
uh, because this money can determine whether the fire territory even needs to take out a loan for the second half of 2023. Um, so I understand that, that this money is part of the water department's budget. Um, nobody has ever been able to tell me how um, this started years ago and how it got so high. Um, but something we all need to come together and, and, and see what, what is fair. Is that, is the fire hydrant putting it off on the consumer, um, you know, under the state statute, the 103D, uh, you know, we can't just do that. We have to have a water study and all that. Uh, is there some negotiation between the fire territory and the town? Um, I just think that we, we're putting a Band-Aid on this right now, but you know something has to be um, done because you know the territory includes Fall Creek Township and Green Township, and some of these people, the money that's coming that would come out of the, the fund, they don't see any benefit from that, and. Um, we're out of let. I mean, we we have a certain amount of money. The fire territory has a certain amount of money, and that's it. We can't raise any more money. <clears throat> but I'm just saying that we we all need to come together to come up with a solution that better suits not only the territory but the town, the, the townships. We're all partners in this. We're all in a marriage, and there's no doubt that the fire territory is going to succeed. It is succeeding, but. $140,000 a year as of right now is, is uh, I think, a little exorbitant. And I'd like to point out, too, that the budget that was approved by this town council was for $250 a hydrant times 230 hydrants. So that's like 57.5. .5. So that's what everybody approved. Um, so that, I think there's some legal problems saying that you have to, the 89,000 we're going to defer for a period of time. I think uh, we need to talk to Jeff about that because the approved budget says for 57.5. Can I start off with a couple of comments? First of all, state law requires somebody to pay for the items. So you're right. Okay, first of all, first of all, listen. I'm not trying to be contrary. I'm, I'm not trying to be confrontational. No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to do any of that. I'm, I'm just I'm not arguing the point. I'm just laying out the facts so that everybody understands the basis for this. So one, State Board of Accounts, they don't allow us to do anything for free. Somebody has to pay for the hydrants. I understand that. So that's the bait that's that's how this all got really got started. So there's only two ways you can do it, but three. Our department pays for it, or the um, our consumers of the water pay for it, or you do a hybrid. Those are your three options. Um, second of all, it's not just for maintenance of the hydrant. Um, hydrants alone are expensive. They're expensive to install. Forty-eight hundred dollars for a hydrant. So what you got to understand though is the capacity of the water towers, the water capacity of the line are all driven by what's called fire flow. Yes, I know that. The, the reason you have the bubble at the top of the water tower, the water tower does two things. It holds capacity for fire flow, but it also regulates pressure. If we were just regulating pressure and not fire flow, it would just be a column. We've seen them sometimes out west, whatever, maybe 10 foot and five foot in diameter tall. So that whole bubble, up there that's only for fire flow the fact we have 12 inch 10 inch lines are for fire flow mm -hmm. if we didn't have fire flow we'd be two inch lines mm -hmm. they're a lot cheaper to install in fact you, can, you don't even have to dig a trench to get a two inch line you can bore it the capacity of the um, water treatment plant which we're paying off a bond on that is the whole design of that, the whole capacity, the whole size of it is, is run by fire flow. That's why you'll see hydrant fees vary from community to community. I mean, you'll see them in the 1300s, you'll see them in the 150s, you'll see 50, whatever they swing, and it depends on the situation they're in. Now, 
nobody knows why that fee was set years ago because nobody was here when it was set. So we just, I don't know, I couldn't tell you. Right. And you know, I, I played with the math. But anyway, I just wanted to educate everybody on fire flow, the cost of fire flow is substantial. I would guess just as a civil engineer, and that's actually my major, this hydraulics and designing system like this, you're probably adding more than 50% of your cost because of fire flow. So that, and then the principle that the state does not allow us to give away anything. You gotta remember before this, it was a fire territory. It was the town having to pay itself in a way because right. we don't make And that was my question. Where did that money come from? What, what, what did it come out of just, fund. it came out, came out of the general fund. Okay. How much was that? 104,000. Yeah. And okay, so from 2012 to 2020, it was approximately $104,000 paid annually out of the general fund, actually through 2021. And then in 2022, it went to 118,465. And I guess that's the only point that I want to make at all in this is that it's not like the town saw an opportunity and price gouged over the last year. Our rate has stayed very uh, steady since you know 2012. So those nine years, we didn't increase at all, despite increasing hydrants, the amount stayed the same. So, and also, if we're going to talk about board actions, and I know that not all of us read that, and that's fine, because I couldn't have told you anything to do with hydrants, but in May of 2022, we did pass the utility rate, uh, or the water rate ordinance, which spelled out how much the hydrants cost, like what the rental fee was. So, I mean, yes. Is that the increase? The 450. From the, no, from the 105 to the 118. Yes, but we've also gone from the, we don't have historic, we don't have good historical data. The best data I could find is that we had approximately 220 hydrants in 2006. And now this latest go around 138,000 is based off of 307 hydrants. So. What's the actual? But you actual know, as of today is 340 to 347. Right. Do we have a list of those by any chance that we have that like map? Do we have which ones are actually working and which ones have been out of service? Yes, there's five that are out of service. There are five that are out of service, and according I think to our most we ever had was nine, and that was during COVID when we couldn't get parks. Well, I mean, you know, as as oh, hold on, just let me finish just real quick because I'm almost done. Um I probably didn't do a very good job of explaining this because this has all been a learning experience for me as well when I took on helping with the fire territory. But um, the $104,000 that came out of the general fund, the town has that $104,000 now because they expect the fire territory to pay it, and that's fine. But as we continue to grow, my main concern is if this continues on, like we went from 307 now to 340 or 347. Um, the fire territory cannot continue to pay $450 a hydrant times $340. I mean, 340 hydrants. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. And I, I just want to have a discussion amongst the fire territory board and the town of Pendleton, because we are married in, the, in, in this arrangement to come up with a, a better plan and what's best for everybody. That's all I'm saying. So I would say, so the population, the population drive the higher number. So as the population grows, you're going to see more and more hydrants. Correct. It, just as of 2022, from March to April, and I called up the clerk treasurer's office when my budget jumped from eight thousand and some odd dollars to eleven thousand dollars, and I asked why. I get it was because of the hydrants. So when I go to try to budget for future. What's an infinite number? I have no idea. Where, when are you guys going to stop building? How many additions are going to stop building? So I don't have a, we, a magic crystal ball to figure out how many hydrants are going to be. The hydrants go in and functional. There is a lead time. Help me out, Anna. Between the two weeks when we approve a plan and when they get the at least a year yeah, or more. I mean, I'd say your farms is being dragged over out for several years. Eric Lynn was, I mean, we knew the count, the town knew the count. Eric Lynn, three 
four years ago. Well, then, if that's the case, then it should have got to my office so I could budget it appropriately because everything from 2022 all the way back to 2017 was $105,000. And that's what it was a static line item. It was automatically when Jeff was the chief, when Mike was the chief, when Danny was the chief, that's it just cut copy paste. And if that was the case, I guess, then I get confused as to why we didn't have an accurate count, like why this is based off of 230 hydrants at $250 a hydrant if. Apparently, since 2012, it's been over $400 a height. Because we were told to budget half. We were told in our first meeting by the then town board president to lower it from 450 to 250. And then oh, town board. Yes. I never said that. Yes, you did. No, and it was, it was public, right back here. Public meeting, we were told to lower it from 450 to 250 to match Ingalls' high rate at the time. And then the town of work over this next year of lowering that and doing to try to figure things out. out. And, and we've been dealing with this that since October to try to figure this out. We, now we went through and did an entire study. Elwood has 310 hydrants. They pay $90 a hydrant, roughly 30 to $50,000 a year. The next closest to us is East Madison paying around 450 or 45,000. And then we're 144. When you call around and tell departments what we pay, their mouths are off. Right? What do you pay? How much? We, we could go buy a tanker truck and have it paid off within three years. And the hydrant by Steve's house, my parents, 31 years I've been alive, the hydrant has never once been used for a house fire. The hydrant also set for almost three or four years broke before it was ever fixed this last summer. We, we paid enough money on that hydrant alone in 31 years to have a new hydrant every 10 years. I mean, it's just. And, and then to go along with, with what uh, Sister Chief Gardner was saying, you know, if if I'm paying, I'm just going to use rough numbers here, $140,000 in hydrant rental fee, I need somebody to explain to me what that money is going for. Is it maintenance? Because if it's maintenance, your ISO shows that you have a zero out of seven on the flushing and inspections and flow testing of all your hydrants. That's huge when it comes to homeowner's insurance, a zero out of seven. That puts us at the class four instead of a class five. So if I'm paying that much money for maintenance, why is it the maintenance being done? It's not just maintenance. Like That's a big you, the cost of the system, more than 50% of it is for the flow. What's the bond? You know, off the top of your head, what the bond is for the water treatment plan. So I'm paying basically 20% of the water water budget then, right? It, because the expense, the, the water is almost free. So my taxes, as, as me as a it's South Madison fire territory now. It's the facilities that cost the money. Okay, I get that. But in the, in the treatment and the chemicals. And I'm going to put a Fall Creek Township resident on. So they're paying taxes into the fire territory and they're not getting any benefits from their taxes going to the town of Pendleton because they can't use hydrogen. But the amount that they were paying to have fire service through when it was Pendleton Volunteer, they didn't have hydrants then either, and they were still on the hook for $104,000. I don't have a hydrant, and I'm part of the town. Like, how do you think this makes me feel? I mean, well, they should put you one in. <laughs> well, I don't $4, have $4,800, and they'll get you one. Right. Yeah. And like the ISO report has 400 hydrants or some odd that they mm -hmm. audited. I don't even, I don't know what Ingalls does. I mean, well, but I, we're on the hook for them on the ISO. Right. I, and so I, I, mean, I can tell you right now, talking to their water, water person, Randy talking to their billing clerk and one of their town council members that this whole thing for them is going to be discussed where they can do a water study because they want it off of their plate as well. Well, somebody has to pay. I mean, they're not going to like get rid of hydrant fees. They do. Right? They do it three ways. So they somebody ha either has to be a hybrid paid by the department or paid wholly by the. Consumer. So the way Ingalls does it is old town, <laughs> old town, new town, old town, which consists of Ingalls, the Old Town of Ingalls and Prairie Hollow. Those 90 hydrants are what the fire department pays in rental fee. Everything else up the 650 corridor, all the way out to 800 South and Summer Lake, that is on the consumer. So they do it two ways. What does the consumer pay out to? Dollar six on a, on a bill. Well, dollar six or dollar sixty. They I can't have remember which water clients that are not part of their municipality for Ingalls. I mean, that's part of the situation also what, what i want to bring to the table because we could talk about this all night is if we continue on the same path that we're continuing on right now there's no way the fire territory can pay every time a new hydro comes in and then we just increase the bill we'll have to go I'm, back to the i'm just here <laughs> i'm just trying to say we need we need to have an open discussion 
between the town board, the fire territory board to come up with some sort of solution. And I think the first solution is the water study that, that are you talking about the rate study? Yeah, the rate, the rate study, study, the rate study that, that you brought up uh, a while back. I think that's the first phase. What we're doing here tonight is a band-aid to help the fire territory uh, succeed and function through 2023. Um, but I think we all can agree that with growth and we come with, let's just say in another three years, we have 550 hydrants. I mean, that's hundreds of thousands of dollars if we continue on the same path that the fire territory would be expected to pay. I mean, that would almost be 10% of their budget on a levy that they don't get to increase until we have another entity like Ingalls come and join. I guess I'm just confused on the surprise at this point. Like, what is it because the fire territory's budget was based off of static, like what you thought was this going to be the same, and now it's Well, changed? what it was, was, was last year, the red flag flew up in the air because of the increase on the hydrants was because I know that's what I budgeted was $105,000 for the year. Well, March and April, that's when the territory was passed. And then the April came in, well, boom, it went up to 11,000. I'm trying to figure out, okay, why did it go up? Started doing a little bit of digging research on my end to try to figure out, okay, what do other communities charge? Then we get the Ingalls bill and it's half of what we're paying here. And then another red flag, a bigger one. It's like, okay, then nobody could tell me exactly where that money goes. I'm just, it's over in this pot and it gets moved to this pot and it gets rode off into the sunset and nobody really knows. Then we did the ISO report and we come back and it's a zero. So I'm like, okay, if I'm getting, if I'm paying for maintenance and they're not doing the maintenance, then they need to be doing the maintenance because I'm paying for that. I get that. So there was a, a lot of things that added up to try to figure out why this is so we reached jake reached out to several departments the city of anderson when i was on there 20 years ago 1999 when i came on they finished that up probably 2000 2001 and they took it from the fire department and put it on the consumer uh, they did it through whenever their um, election cycle was so they actually put it on the consumer like i said you know the city of alexandria they you know do it the chesterfield pays a little bit but they buy their water from the city of anderson so various communities do various different things well here again the council was presented a budget of fifty-seven thousand five hundred dollars and then now january and february my appropriation reports has got eleven thousand dollars taken out of it so it went up unexpectedly yeah so and well the talk of growth has never been talked about well it has it go up though because you just said may and april of last year it was eleven thousand dollars we we were told they two, thought it was we were told two hundred and fifty dollars a hydrant the that's budget it. and that's the what budget. we budgeted when we budgeted that yeah, turned the budget okay. in it was approved okay. and then and i guess the, to add on to this and steve was at the last territory meeting and maybe this is a jeff question so there's no written contract between the south madison fire territory and the town of pendleton for hydrant fees actually but there's no and when you approve the budget if jeff bellamy told us there's no one has given us a contract that was signed in the hydro rental rates and by the town of Do or approving our budget last year 57 500 that is a town and fire territory stating that's what is going to be charged I for this year i disagree with that but the budget generally is a projection on what's going to be spent it doesn't necessarily reflect actual cost the fact that the, the council passed the what is it 450 mm -hmm. that's the price no they passed 250. No, no, no 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 we're talking on our water on oh, the water, on the water yeah so i i think there's a lot of councils and fiscal bodies that will put a budget number that they even know will be hit for the year the additional appropriation or a loan would be the way to um, so this is good for us to know if this is if this is the route we go then starting tomorrow south madison fire territory we will reduce our staffing from five people a day to four people a day due to hydro rail fees. And, I mean, it, seriously, on, seriously. Okay. No, the, 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 no, I'm, so, I'm just serious. serious. Just, I, you, you guys can have in front of you is a I'm not paying a 2% interest on this. But we've got to pay it back, Scott. We have that, to pay that it is back. the rate you guys yeah. are going to continue yeah. to keep. Yeah, and we that is an extra person a day. Years. And we also have a lot of other things to pay for three years. We're trying to hire staffing, and this is where we come back to we hired 10 guys next year. One five years, we're going to have to lay five. Ken was a fireman for 25 years. Don't pull that card off. Hey, listen, 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 guys, listen. 
This is kind of getting out of hand a little bit on both no, sides. It, it is when you make a threat like that. We're not. Nice. We're just listen, listen, to Steve, listen. you're the president of the board. You know what our funding is. You know our fiscal responsibilities are. We just You've seen our staffing. Pay for that. We just offered up to loan you money and delay that. So but why are we the bad guys? We're not Nobody, saying you're the bad listen, guys. We need you just threatened because the hydro fees to pull this back. Well, I need and to know so because we said, okay, we'll give you a loan. It's no, really easy. We'll <laughs> say we're All right. And by the way, because I was the last guy that triggered a test to meet ISO regulations, is back when I was on the fire department and was always driven by the fire chief. They had one in 2017, so it wasn't the last one. Well. Okay, listen, listen. I'm going to say the final thing here, and then we're going to move on. We're going to do. We're going to. We're going to discuss that. We've been discussing it. We're going to vote on this, and then what I bring to the table is the parties involved in the in the territory. We, we cannot continue with status quo. I think everybody can agree with that. We cannot continue to have the fire territory pay hundreds of thousands of dollars as the town of Pendleton grows. We have to come up with a better solution. We have options that we all need to sit down, come to the table, and talk. That's all I'm asking. And I don't think that's out of line. No. And the question that I have... If you agree that those options are out there. Right, and the questions that I go... So I'm not pointing a finger why this ended up the way it is, although I will have to say, the first time I ever really got a hold of their budget, it took me 30 seconds, well, two minutes, the first 10 online items, I found $60,000 in mistakes. And I stopped because I was like, holy cow. Which mistakes were those? There were several. Okay. Did you let me know about awful. those? And it was already. All right, this is, this is stuff we don't need to talk about in a public meeting. I'm sorry. We don't. Well, I mean, I appreciate you going and demeaning how we did our budget and if it was problems. That you didn't bring it to our attention. I really appreciate it that. Was already, it was already, it was already done. What well, time I got to look at? It. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, the question that I have is, I need an answer because I have to present my initial budget in May. I gotta have an, I gotta have a direction to go. And what we discussed in the fire territory budget was to 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 come up with a best case scenario and a worst case scenario. Okay. We just need to know is two hundred and fifty dollars, or are we back to four hundred and fifty dollars? The so ordinance that we have says four hundred and fifty dollars. Like I, I, I wasn't. I have never been so involved in the fire territory over the last two years as I have been in the last month. Um, but I can tell you that our ordinance says it's four hundred and fifty-one dollars or four hundred fifty dollars, um, and so that is what the ordinance says. I was never in a fire territory meeting where we ever discussed this. Like. I went back through Zooms trying to see if we had already done this situation where we were going to defer some of these payments. I don't have, there's nothing in our minutes that have said $250 like, and I apologize if that's the story. There was, there was got. a vote of five to zero to, to suspend it for six months because there was a conversation. What month was it? I have no idea, but <laughs> I know, I know counselor had it because he made a comment because it was a moratorium and he said, no, it had to be a deferred and everything else. Cause there was conversation about it and it was voted five to zero on it. Okay. Then and here again, I can't see anything cause nothing's uploaded on YouTube, nor all, can I see any of the minutes. All of our meetings are on YouTube. All of our minutes are online. I pro I, I know because I've gone back and read I have not board, been able to find a uh, poor wardrobe choice or hairstyle I have had <laughs> over the last two years. I guarantee you they're on YouTube. All right. Um, I will and, look when I get home again. Because... And I have gone and looked and I would love to find it. But anyway, on this, the way this is structured right now, there is a correction. Um, the shortfall is $81,092.08. We need to strike the interest because we have never collected interest on an interdepartmental loan such as this. So the gap between 57.5 and the 138 is $81,092, but it needs to reflect that it is a 0% interest or no interest. And then we probably need to discuss the term. Are we good with the three years or what's the situation there? My thought on it is, this is a band-aid until we can come up with something that we all can agree upon. I mean, so we could have another resolution that trumps this. Yes, one. we can revise yeah. this. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, we can revise this. 
So I just want to be able to have the fire territory possibly not have to get another bond loan for 2023. And this is the band-aid that can help that happen. So when does this start? What payments have been made so far, Karen? And not to put you on the spot, but you're sitting here, so. January, February, and March. Okay, so, so this would be April. So it comes out monthly, right, Karen? So it comes out monthly, so whenever the 57 buys that is budgeted, whenever the 11,000. Start. Okay, once that's depleted, then this will kick in. So the first three months of the year, money's going to be taken out from fire hydrants. Is that what you're saying? It already, it already has. has. Yes. Okay. Is that the eleven thousand? Yes. So thirty-three thousand dollars. A little yes. more than that. Okay. Yeah, and it like like Jake said this. This is very pivotal because we do have a part-time person that we are paying at the Ingle Station that in order for us to make the loan payments back, we're gonna have to probably not run him because we were told the hydrant rental fee will go away. That's why we got that third person there. He, that hydrant rental fee is paying for that operational person. The hydrant rental fee, we're not going beyond what your budget is set up for. The 57 five, like it's going to take that 57.5 to zero and then we're going to loan you the gap. So it's not like your budget's going to go beyond the 57.5 for 2023, right. if that makes sense, what I'm saying. That's why I asked, when does this start? Does it start January 1? Because it I'm does, already halfway through that 57 already. Right, and once it hits zero, then this loan's going to kick in. So it's not going to go beyond the 57.5 that you have budgeted currently, which that shouldn't, I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult. No, I'm just right. saying you're that right. if you have 57.5 sitting in a line item that is for hydrant fees, what else would you be using that for other than hydrant fees? So this is the gap that you tack on to the 57.5 to get to the full 138, which is what the rental actually is until we can figure out what's going on. But we're not gonna go beyond your 57.5 that you have in that line item for hydrant rental for 2023. So it shouldn't have any bearing on staffing or part-time people or anything like that because you're not gonna, you can't spend money that's not allocated anyway. And that 57.5 has been allocated for hydro. Okay. I mean, well, no, I'm, is that fine? Yeah, I mean, no. okay. That's why I didn't exactly that's why well, I had so. deal with the comment that you were gonna have to take because offline. Right in 2023, right now, that was that was a low shot, and I'm sorry I came back with another punch to the note because you hit me low. I don't want to punch you in the nose, so that was not a fair money. So, Karen, is it exactly like eleven thousand per month or no, change? Eleven thousand. And some change, or there's something. Yeah, yeah. Um, change. Eleven thousand. Up to fifty-seven five. Well, just eleven thousand dollars a month. That's what everybody keeps talking about. That's what one hundred thirty-two thousand dollars a year. We have been the fire department has budgeted one hundred and five since nineteen or twenty seventeen, right? Two thousand twelve. My point is, it's twenty some thousand dollar difference when you're talking numbers. I think what we're coming up is we budgeted 57,500 when that budget is approved last year by the town council. That is a number we go off of. And then when you come back in and say, no, it's still the hundred and something. I mean, that's any, any person's daily life. If you tell me something's gonna cost $5 and you come back and tell me it's $20 and I only had $5 to spend. It, that's, that's what we're coming up. We were told 57,500. That was the budget that was approved. So that's the numbers we're working off of. And yes, the loan's great, but it puts us right back into the hundred and roughly one hundred and forty thousand dollars when we were told fifty-seven five hundred was approved. In the last so you budget. put that in your budget next year at one hundred and forty or whatever it is. Well, we'll cross next year. When we get to next year. I mean, when we get ready to do your this, budget this, for this next just, year, this is just going to gap it for right now. You're going with the fifty-seven five. Yes, <laughs> that's what we're going with right now. We got as of right now three years and. That's something we can even discuss. Zero interest. 
three, five. Or, I mean, I don't know what that's what we'll have to get with Scott on, but you're going to stay with the 57.5 this year when you had budget. And let's not even look about talk about the 80 some thousand for right now. This is a band aid to get us through 2023 to, so we all can talk and figure something out. That's fair. I mean, okay. and I, I think because what well, we are going to do a rate study this year, correct? I mean, as long as it, more, yes. as long as the, the train keeps moving down the track, because like I said, we started these public meetings all the way back whenever. And, you know, like I said, March, April, May, because I know I called up upstairs. And I'm like, why is this going up? And why am I paying so much more? Well, then we've had meetings and we've had meetings. It's like, okay, do this. No, it's changed. And we first we was like, don't even pay it. We're going to take care of it. Don't worry about it. Then it was half. And then it was like, okay, now it's full price. And then well, now we know it's 57.5 for the room. That's it for 2023. 2023. And we have a three year deferral of <coughs> payment until, and that gives us time to come up with a new solution. Three year deferral on the 82. Yes. Next year, if, if we're still working on things for next year's budget, it'll still be 57.5. I disagree. You don't put yourself in that position. We're not. We're going to get it all, we're going to get it figured out before then. Right, is what I'm okay. saying. This would be an undetermined amount. Yes, an <laughs> undetermined amount. <laughs> Just put a question mark on there. For right now. Okay. So, do I have a motion to approve a resolution to borrow the funds from, or the SMFBT to borrow the funds from the water utility in the amount of eighty-one thousand ninety-two dollars and eight cents with zero percent interest? Let me let me ask one more question. Is it Jeff? Jeff? Is it legal, Jeff? To loan money without interest. Yes, to to okay to the city of Cook okay. Town. I know we've done this one other time, but okay. And one quick thing, I know Marissa and I have, and, and uh, Shane, I've talked to a lot of people. We've had really productive conversations, and I I, I just want to keep that train rolling, and uh, I know we can get this all worked out. I'm 100 percent positive. Yeah. You're not going to fail. Oh well, I just. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, hydro rental because I'll send tankers in and never use it, so and not pay it. So I mean, that's the, you know, I don't want to go that route because they're there. But I think you know, as we're long as working. there's a long term solution for the growth, I'm happy with it because right now we got nobody can tell me when the growth is going to stop, and I don't know how many hydrants are going to go in, and I just don't want another surprise going. Hey, okay, it's another thirty thousand dollars. We're going to raise it. I'm like. Well, you're going to get surprised because none of us know what the growth well, be. At least none of us have a crystal ball. Here, here's here's the surprise. Have one, we don't have. I know. Here's the surprise, though. As long as it comes across my desk and an addition's going in, I can make the necessary changes. Yeah, I agree. So that's all I ask for. Okay. All right, Madam President. Do I have a motion to approve a resolution of the town of Pendleton authorizing borrowing funds from the town water utility in the amount of $81,092.08 with 0% interest for a period of three years? So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor of approving the resolutions, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carried. Last thing on the agenda, uh, printed out motion of uh, ordinance to uh, retain unused vacation benefits. Preliminarily, we'll call this 2307. Um, so I emailed this out earlier this week, so you guys, nothing has changed in it as far as I know. Scott, do you have anything you want to add? So we have a policy on vacation, you can use it or you can lease it. And, uh, so this, this last snowstorm right around Christmas made me realize that I was going to have a full possibility of pulling people in that went, saved up vacation so they could spend time on their family. That we were going to have to pull them out and they weren't going to be able to. It ended up being almost insignificant of the amount of vacation that was needed. But it brought to light the fact that we would have to punish guys in two different ways if we had a bad snowstorm around Christmas and we may have to pull them in away from their family or two not able to use vacation. So I just thought it was. That's a bunch of bull. So basically, hey, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. We talked about this yesterday. We agreed that this was a manager's job to regulate that. Yeah. If Ricky doesn't get two days, then you make sure he gets it the next time. This doesn't have to be lowered into paper and, and 
everything written up. That's a manager's job to manage his people. After the HR situations we found ourselves in over the last three years, I don't think it's hurting anything by having extra documentation is my opinion on well, the situation. Willie, I have no power to place things on this one. It's in the power of the... I know, but this... But you're yelling at me for... Like, well, we I had this conversation it. yesterday. I know, and you and seem I, to I don't it. know. I wasn't in the conversation, and I'm the one that sets the agenda, but magically got pulled I, off when I, I came I to put the office on. yesterday. You're accusing me of putting... No, it I'm not. I'm just wondering well, what after our call. Or something. Nobody had to talk with me. I said last Friday when I was attempting to set the agenda that this was going to be on it because I've been kicking around my email since before I even took this gig. And so I put it on there and then, what? You're welcome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> and so I was trying to follow through on something. We had had discussions internally that this was a necessary thing for Dawn to be able to manage vacation time. Nobody had a conversation with me taking it off the agenda, it just masterfully went away. And I think it's my job to set the agenda. So I put it back on there because I think that more documentation, as far as making sure everybody's treated fairly, is never a bad thing. But that could just be me wanting to put things on paper. No, as the town grows, it's better to document it. It's easier for everyone to keep track of. If somebody's not here or is no longer with the town, then it's better for it to be on paper. A perfect example is the fire hydrant cost. Exactly. All right, but this ordinance says the request to carry over unused vacation benefits is approved by the town manager, town chief marshal, or clerk treasurer. That's the supervisors. That's the same thing, is what I'm saying. But it's, it's done. It it's in, done. It's putting it in writing. Okay. Now we have something to back us up right. for future use. The paper trail. That's all it is. My one question on it is, I totally agree with it, but I don't want the employees trying to bank time. Like they could have taken it off, but they didn't, and then they go back and say, "Well, I want to add that to 2024." No. This is only when they this is operation. Well, operation says. Says. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. In other words, I got to make that. Awful call saying, right. I have to pull you off of vacation because we're getting hit and I don't have enough. Right. Guys. They don't want me to drive. Then they're the done. Yeah. Yes. Because that's a terrible <laughs> idea. All I ever offer you is she actually does house. want to drive the snow plows. Well, I also don't want you to pay the fix and you'd be able to run it too. So <laughs> it's higher. You probably get hourly payments. Really they're expensive. <laughs> <They're> expensive. <laughs> okay. Any more discussion on 2307? Do I have a motion for approval? 2307 ordinance of the Pendleton Town Council permitting certain town employees to retain certain unused vacation benefits. So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor of approving 2307 signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carried. Do I have to? Do you want to? Do you want we're, to are, we're not really going to have any weather related no, issues. We, we, can wait. Wait. we can wait. Move that to next. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we adjourn? Public comment? Anybody holding over from earlier? Uh, my name is Bryce Owen from my office. It's up the street at 119 North Point. Um, I actually have a, three comments. They're all very short. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Owens family, um, my sister Amanda Blackader. Uh, the two of us have been suddenly put in the position of having to step in and try to organize and move things forward. And so we wanted to express our, our thanks for the town and being so diligent, and especially with Mr. Graham and trying to follow up with the, the RINCON situation. And we'll do our best to be whatever we can do in helping to facilitate that. Um, second, unrelated comment. Um, and uh, Scott's intimately aware of this. We have a never ending problem with semis in the alley right behind here. You have, the smaller trucks are really not a problem, but the semis, there's no way for any of the semis to actually get out of the alley onto the property of any place that they're delivering to. And there's, because the alley's narrow and the buildings are right there, we have a recurring problem and the police are involved. I'm not sure how often, but it's often um, <clears throat> with the alley being blocked for long periods of time. In talking to some of the officers and some of the food delivery people, I have a thought to just throw out here. Um, in other communities, one of the ways they solve that is to put a dedicated loading zone right out in front on what would be State Street only during the early morning hours. So the people who are running the business, they have to make a person available to accept that delivery at five or six in the morning. It doesn't interfere with the daytime use of our valuable parking out here, but it avoids 
the problem of the semis blocking all access to all the businesses, to all the driveways in the back of the block. So I'd like to suggest maybe that we think about an ordinance which would keep the semis off of the alley, but in return, provide them with a reasonable place to have access to these businesses when it's not impinging on any other uses. So, so, so I, so I would just think about, so if there is plenty of space in the morning, you're right, until the shops open up. Yes. So, um, but really all we would need to do is have an ordinance that says delivery may be bay in the front, taking up so many spots. I don't know how many that would be, but they have to be cleared by a certain time. It, it, yes, and in order to make that work, we would need to mark that off so that the overnight parkers are not obstructing the truck making the delivery. Okay. I see what you're saying. You're going to let them do it on both sides of the street at the same time. They would just basically be no parking room. From, from, yeah. From four in the morning, four to six in the morning, morning till morning, four to yeah. six or something. Yeah. Like that. Okay. I get it. That's a good idea. Something like that would solve it. I've been looking for solutions. Well, we've, yeah, we've given really a lot great. of thought to this. So, yeah. so then, thank you. Third, third comment on the, the fire territory. And I didn't come to talk about this, but I happen to have done some undergraduate work on this topic forever ago. The free rider problem is what we're really talking about here. We have all these people who don't have benefit of the use of the hydrant, and yet we're having the fire territory pay for the use of the hydrants from areas that don't benefit from it. And to the extent that that levy is coming from the property tax rolls, we have all the people who don't pay property taxes who are taking advantage of the benefit of that. So to the extent that we can shift that real cost onto the people who have the actual benefit of the hydrants, being the consumers of the water, it actually makes it more fair to everybody involved. So I would argue that's not quite right. So Rissa, for example, says she doesn't have a hydrant. Where's that tanker fill up at? Off a of hydrant. And if the hydrant is a miss, it should be named a hydrant fee. And it's for lack of a better way to do it, that's what it's calculated on because there is some proportionality between the <coughs> hydrants your population and it's also driven by the number of structures so that's why it's common practice it's a uh, fast and fast easy way to calculate what that fee is but it's the capacity to do fire flow <clears throat> and so whether that hydrant has to be that hydrant that's being used for a fire is located in front of the house or located two miles away you still, it's the fire flow capacity that you're really, really paying for. It. It's not that part of that. That appliance called the hydrant, yes, is part of it. But usually there's a direct relationship between fire load, population, um, and that sort of thing. And so that's probably why historically a fire a hydrant fee is, is a number of hydrants is used to calculate the fee. But really the cost is not that appliance at whatever it was, $3,800. It is the ability to have a fire flow and the capacity. And, and what I'm suggesting is not disagreeing with that. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you have a lot of structures which are not contributing on the, the levy at all. And so if you shift some of the cost to those other structures, it makes it more fair for everybody. You mean shift it to the levy, which is an argument not to put it on the customer. No. Put it on it wouldn't be fair to put all of it on the water supply, but to put some proportion of it on the users of the water. So for example, if you have a, uh, you have a building that for some reason is exempt from paying any taxes, they still have the same police protection, the same fire protection, and yet they don't pay anything. And so all the rest of us are subsidizing that use. And so if we make that exempt structure pay some proportion of its real cost, then that makes the cost more fair to everybody else. So it's a fee. It's a fee, but it's not on the tax roll. So then you have more cost, more people that aren't covered by a hydrant that also get the benefit. Because they're not customers. If you go to a well, fee, 
on the on the water bed. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be fair to make it all be here. Scott, to add on at this point, we have multiple people on their 80 square miles that would never get a benefit of the penalty fund. Even if we needed water for their house fire, some of like well, I, yeah, I 13, know there's some drafting locations in that sort. Well, of even too. Madison Avenue at 500 South, my animals live there. We have a, a house fire at my animals' house. We're not coming back to Pendleton to get water. We're going across Madison Avenue, the best way to hydrate for yeah, disposal just supposed to getting water there. Right, you're going to go to the closest hydrant. So there, even those users. And even point, if it's not a Pendleton hydrant, it's a mutual aid hydrant. So vice versa would happen too. So that's where I think to his point, it's not. And that's back to our point, and I, it just needs to be media. It's not fair to the 80 square miles that we cover that those people's tax money are going to just Pendleton fire hydrants that benefit the town residents of Pendleton, where it really doesn't benefit those, those people that are living out in the country. Marissa is waiting on a tanker instead of us using that hydrant, she's not going to get adequate water supply. Uh, people of Ball Creek Green Township, most of Ball Creek Township gets no support from these hydrants. Most of Ball Creek Township, we're going to go to Anderson to fill water. Stoner Drive, Slack Drive, that entire area up there is going to be used by Anderson Water. And there's a state statute that you cannot fill for water use or during a fire. So if Lapel comes, gets water from the town of Pendleton for a structure fire in their area. You guys can't send them the water bill. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, so, and that's where we're just trying to get to the rate studies and putting this back on the users that actually get the use of penalty, penalty water. We just have to be careful about putting random, not random fees, but increasing these utility rates more than what they already are as we are in a pro growth situation. We don't want that to become prohibitive of businesses coming here, people moving here, those things. And so that's the, the truth will be in the utility study when it is done and to see how we measure up and what the forecast is. And so I think it's very premature to say it needs to go in the consumer or it needs to go and stay with the fire department. I think that we have to wait until our research is done before we make any kind of, you know, agreement that that's what needs to happen one way or the other. Is that fair to say, do we think? I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other public comment? All right. Anybody on Zoom with public comment? Any hands raised? Okay. All right. Wait so, a minute. I got one more comment. Okay. Bryce, I'd like to thank you and your sister for coming tonight. We really appreciate your efforts and we all thought a lot of your dad. We're sorry about your loss. Okay, with nothing else, nobody on Zoom, no more, no further public comment. I make a motion to adjourn at 732.